I'm running some pressure tests for two in-progress video series on plumbing leak detection and on whole house water monitors and shutoff systems, only to discover the phenomenon of thermal expansion from the water heater. Now, I'm not a scientist or a plumber, just a curious homeowner experimenting with a water pressure gauge, fighting whatever volume a 50 gallon tank expands to once heated. Some sources say two gallons, others just a few quarts. I'm not getting scientific there because the main point is the water really does expand when heated and contracts when that heat source shuts off. And that really messes with a water pressure test. What you're seeing are my baseline tests with a water heater left on overnight and absolutely no water use. Thermal expansion and contraction explains why I was seeing a consistent drop in pressure in the better lit daytime 15 minute tests and one hour tests as well. It may be small, especially in the 15 minute tests, but it's still there. In the one hour test, it looks like about two PSI is lost. But when the water heater turns on to maintain temperature, you can see there is a spike of 25 to 30 PSI over the course of five minutes. As soon as the water heater stops heating, the water immediately starts cooling and begins shrinking. The water is always in flux, either expanding or contracting, creating constant movement of water inside your plumbing. In my older neighborhood, we have tank water heaters and copper plumbing. There are no PRVs, check valves of any kind, or expansion tanks. Because it's not a closed system, expansion from a water heater kicking on is expected to go backwards into the city supply. When the main shutoff to the house is closed, the phenomenon of thermal expansion is obvious and potentially dangerous if the PSI goes above 80. However, it seems in my case that the regular 55 to 60 PSI is enough to max out around 80 when the thermal expansion is at its highest. At least it is in the winter, where the lows are in the 40s and the highs are in the 70s. This might not be the case in the summer when lows are in the 90s and highs are well into the 100 and teens. I'll do a follow-on video this summer. Looking at this phenomenon from the other side of the shutoff, it makes sense why any type of pressure gauge will look wiggly and a water monitor using a freewheeling turbine will see extra events in the history log. The entire neighborhood is relying on only a few water heaters running at any given time with the rest of the system absorbing the pressure as the water in the water heaters not running contracts. For those of you following the water monitor and shutoff series, I'll give you a little preview into two upcoming videos, the hidden costs of installing a whole house water monitor and comparing fin and flow. Thermal expansion in an open system explains why flow by Moen has so many extra events in the log. The current design utilizes a freewheeling turbine. Now, compare that to Fin Plus, which uses an ultrasonic flow sensor and pairs that activity with a pressure sensor. Events are only logged when the two match. In order to accommodate for thermal expansion, as many cities have introduced in newer developments, there are a couple new additions into each plumbing system to make each house a closed system. A reduced pressure backflow prevention assembly of some sort along with an expansion tank for a storage water heater. These additional parts introduce quite a bit of pressure stability on all appliances and faucets, along with giving the ever-expanding city some relief from additional thermal expansion. I've just briefly covered these two subjects and I will make a further deep dive into them in those upcoming videos. So now that we know about thermal expansion, let's go back to my original problem where I'm trying to determine the smallest leak possible with a water pressure gauge. There are a few issues. The main problem is you're probably only going to check for a leak with a water pressure gauge when you suspect a leak is present. At that point, you have thermal contraction compounded by a leak, making it harder to distinguish between the two. Here, I'm showing the original starting point what it could be like with only a leak or thermal contraction present, and then what a leak and thermal contraction could do together. Even worse, you can't rely on my baseline test for your home because your amount of plumbing is different than mine, and that difference very much impacts the results of the test. But it gives you a rough idea on what you are up against. One alternative is to cool down the water in the water heater fast as I showed in last week's video, and run any tests without thermal expansion or contraction present. 
Coming up, I'll be sharing the results of the minimum leaks I can catch with a water pressure gauge, water meter, Vin Plus, and Flow by Moen. It's pretty crazy to think that what I originally took for granted is actually something very complicated in reality. It's something that can be explained and figured out, and I hope you join me in this experiment. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Friday.